Hello, incredible humans. I'm so thankful for you and I'm so thankful that you're here and that you are who you are. You're just beautiful. And I'm so glad that you decided to tune into my channel today. There's been a lot of crazy stuff happening as I'm sure all of you know regarding the coronavirus and staying at home and taking precautions necessary and so with that um, we will see in the world a lot of fear a lot of anxiety a lot of chaos and panic and so the Lord has just placed a message on my heart to share with you all in the midst of a time where it's easy to join in on the panic, but you actually were not made to join in on the panic um, and you don't have to either. So I've been reading through the reign of King Solomon, which is in 1 Kings and 2 Chronicles. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, it's gonna, where we're going to be basing um, the message off today, is where... Solomon has built the temple dedicated to the Lord and they have now finished it and so now they are offering sacrifices to the Lord within the temple and they're dedicating it to the Lord. So it's built, they're dedicating it to him. And so starting in verse 1 of chapter 7, it says, When Solomon finished praying, fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the burnt offerings and sacrifices and the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glorious presence of the Lord filled it. When all the people of Israel saw the fire coming down and the glorious presence of the Lord filling the temple, they fell face down on the ground and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, he is good. His faithful love endures forever forever. He is good. His faithful love endures forever. It does not end. It is unconditional and he is good. That's all they could come to say in such a moment. And so I want you to kind of imagine your life, your body, your mind, your heart, your attention as a temple. In this moment, the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. So the glorious presence of the Lord is where attention was directed. Because of that, the priests had to leave. Like they could not even be in there because the presence of the Lord was so glorious. It was so heavy. It was so holy. They had to leave. Only the presence of the Lord could fill such a place. And all of the people of Israel who saw that happen, they had to fall face down and begin to say, the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. And I think in such a moment, in such a unique season where there is disease, there is panic, there is uncertainty, it's very easy for anxiety and fear and panic to fill our temple, to fill our mind, to fill our heart, to fill our attention. And when doing so, we join in on the panic. And I don't want us to look up after this season has passed and we missed an opportunity to lean into the Lord. In James 4, 8, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. What an incredible opportunity to be on our knees talking with the Lord to be in his word, to lean into him and let him establish our steps as he leads us through this unknown territory, as he reveals his glory and he works all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. As he uses this time for the church to rise up, be the light of the world, a city built on a hill that cannot be hidden and let his love and his hope be made known. Let the gospel be made known to all the world so that this could be a time that people come to genuinely know Jesus. I don't want us to miss this time, but if we allow anxiety, fear, panic to fill our temple, to fill our mind, our heart, our attention, then we're going to look up and we may have missed an opportunity. And so what an incredible truth to rest in the fact that, wait, I actually don't have to join in on the panic. 
I actually can rest in the peace of the Lord because he is still on the throne. He is worthy and he promises that he will work all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. Oh, I love him. He's so good. And so I think what's so cool about this is in 2 Corinthians 4, 18, it says, let us fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, because we know that what is seen is just temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And so when I set my eyes on what is seen, on the panic, on the disease, on the fear, well, it makes sense that I'm gonna want to join in on that. But if I fix my eyes on the glorious presence of the Lord, then just as the priests had to leave the temple, so does anxiety, fear, panic, chaos have to leave my attention when I am giving my full attention to the Lord, to the glorious presence of God. He's so worthy of, of our presence. The people could not help but fall on their face and say, He is good. His love endures forever. In Psalm 27, David prays, This is the only thing that I ask. This is the only thing that I seek, that I may gaze upon the Lord, that I may gaze upon his beauty. My soul says, seek his face, so his face will I seek. Whenever I am focused on his glorious presence, then just as all the Israelites had to fall face down and declare the worthiness of God, so does anxiety, fear, chaos, panic, has to bow down at the name of Jesus. I want to read something to you from Philippians 2. Oh, y'all, it's so good. Let me show you. Let me show you. Philippians 2, it's talking about Jesus. And Paul, Paul is speaking here. And he says, it starts off in verse 6. I'm just going to read verse 6 through 11 with you. It says, though he, Jesus, was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to when Jesus came to become flesh and make his home among us. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Whenever we decide to set our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, because we know that what is seen is just temporary, but what is unseen is eternal the things of this world the things that are that the enemy will use to steal kill and destroy our joy our attention our faith our confidence we can actually see the name of anxiety the name of panic the name of fear bow down to the glorious presence of the name that is Jesus the name that is above every other name it says in second chronicles 7 the priests they could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glorious presence of the Lord filled it when our attention is so focused on God there's no room for fear I'm not consumed by the ways of the world whenever I'm consumed by his mercy. It says, when all the people of Israel saw the glorious presence of the Lord, they fell face down and worshiped. Anxiety has to fall face down and ultimately declare who the Lord is whenever your focus is on him. And so I just want to leave you with um, some verses that I pray just encourage you during this time to know that truly the Lord is the King of Kings. The Lord is the Prince of Peace. In 2 Thessalonians 3.16, mm, it says that God himself gives you peace at all times, including times such as these, and in every situation, including situations like this. And in Isaiah 26, 3, it says that those who trust in the Lord and who fix their minds on him, God keeps them in perfect peace. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast your cares upon the Lord. He cares for you. 
you were made. It is fitting for you to have your full attention on him. It is fitting for us to praise the Lord, Psalm 147. It is fitting for us to sing praises to our God and for him to have our undivided attention. It's literally where we were made to be, is in his presence, focused on his presence and who he is. And when we do that, we are then able to walk with wisdom, walk with good judgment, love people well in the midst of chaos. We're not denying that there's chaos, Chaos, but we're proof of a prince of peace that is real and alive and well because we're walking with him with our focus on him in the midst of chaos we're able to truly live out what it means to be the light of the world in Acts 20 24 Paul says my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God, this is an opportunity to not only let the Lord bring personal rest to your soul, yes, my soul, find rest in God, our hope comes from Him, be still and know that He is God, for He will be exalted among the nations, He will be exalted in all the earth. Not only do I personally get to experience that peace, but from a place of resting in the presence of the Lord, I can be a vessel of the presence of the Lord into the lives of people who have either forgotten such a hope or don't yet know such a hope. And those last um, two verses I want to leave with y'all today is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And it says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, with prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, come and tell the Lord what's on your heart. Or pour your heart out to Him. Let Him know what's on your heart. Ask Him for healing. Ask Him for clarity. Ask Him for people to come to know Him during this time. Thank Him for who He is. Thank you for how He's sovereign and for the fact that He is at our right hand. We will not be shaken, but He's also been continually set before us. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we have a confident hope that is not of this world. And He says that He will guard your heart and your mind with His peace that surpasses all understanding. But His love, His peace, His presence doesn't end with you, but it continues with you. You were made to go share it with people. You're incredible. And I pray that your attention, your heart, your mind is focused on the glorious presence of the Lord in such a way that anxiety, fear, panic doesn't have room in your temple. It has to fall face down declaring that Jesus is the name above every name. You're so loved. And I pray that this um, message that the Lord encouraged me with, I pray that it encourages you. Be sure to give a thumbs up button if you were encouraged. Um, comment below how you were encouraged, what other material you would like to be covered. Um, and go follow me at 1 Corinthians 13 underscore love for more content on the word, more content on what God is doing in my life and how he is placed on my heart to pour into your life. And don't forget how awesome you are today. <laughs> Bye guys!